Hey everyone, this is Eric here from Personal Profitability, and I had a quick favor to ask you before we get started. Now this is a pretty new podcast, it's only about three months old, and I'm trying to really grow the audience and help as many people as I can. So if you like what you hear here, if you could just take a few minutes and share it on your favorite social networking site with, with some friends or people you think might enjoy it. Now if you use Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Reddit, Buffer, StumbleUpon, Tumblr, Instapaper, or if people still use Dig or Delicious, I don't know, I think those went out of style a while back. If you could just take a second and give it a share, I would really appreciate it. Thanks and enjoy the episode. Hi, this is Melanie from Dear Debt. You are listening to Eric Rosenberg, who totally rocks, and you are about to listen to the Personal Profitability Podcast. You're listening to the Personal Profitability Podcast, where you'll learn how to earn income, live better, and put your money to work for you. Here's your guide on your path to personal profitability, Eric Rosenberg. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome back to the Personal Profitability Podcast. This is episode number six and features a reader question from Carrie in Seattle. Now, Carrie is self-employed and wants to know a little bit more about how she should deal with her retirement accounts and her retirement planning, which can be a challenge for self-employed people. So let's turn it over to her for her question. Hi, Eric. Um, I'm a freelance consultant and I manage all of my own personal finances as well as my business finances. Um, one thing that I've been wondering about recently is, is there an easy automated way to continually put money into some sort of retirement account? I currently have a, a Vanguard account with my IRA and an old 401k from when I worked for an employer. Um, but now that I'm on my own, I'd love to find a way to automatically send a designated amount into a new retirement account each month. Is there a way to do this? And if so, uh, what account type do you recommend and what percentage of my income should I send there? Thanks so much. Well, thank you so much for that great question, Carrie. I would say pretty common and popular question among self-employed people because, you know, with with people who have a full-time regular, you know, eight to five type of job, with a large employer, that employer is going to put together all of the investment and retirement account options for you for most part. So, you know, 401ks and whatnot, they're all set up for you. You just choose the funds and the percent of your paycheck you want to put in there. So that's all you know, pretty easy to, to put together for, uh, for people with a full-time job. But if you are self-employed, you have to do everything yourself. And that's including you know, picking the type of account, where you want to have the account, what investments you want to use in that account. So all sorts of decisions that you don't have to make when you have a full-time employer. But fortunately, I can walk you through it. It's not all that difficult. So to start, I actually just wanted to address one thing you mentioned in your question. You said you have an old 401k account from a prior employer. And the first thing I would do before you do anything else is roll that over into a self-directed IRA. Now that works just like the 401k, except it's no longer attached to your employer, and you can choose any type of investment you'd like for that. And you mentioned that you have some accounts at Vanguard's. So that's a perfect place to do your rollover. You just call them up, tell them that you have an old 401k you'd like to roll over, and they'll actually walk you through everything on the phone. And when it comes time that your cash um, moves over, it'll be a check they'll either send to you or straight to Vanguard if your old 401k company will allow that. You can choose your investments. I would choose something like a target date fund or an S&P 500 index fund, something you know low cost and, and easy that you don't have to spend any of your time managing. So now that that's out of the way, you know, that, that's actually pretty quick. It should take you know, maybe a 20, 30 minute phone call on the high end of, of things. So shouldn't take a whole lot of time. So now time to do you know, answer your big question. What do you do as a self-employed person when you want to save automatically, you know, automatic savings, your head's in the right place. It's definitely the best way to go because you don't forget. You don't have any oops and you don't spend the money on vacations or whatever fun hobbies and things you like to spend your money on. So saving first is very smart and a great idea. So what I would do, I'd break your savings up into two different spots, two different accounts. 
So first, something that anybody can use, whether you're self-employed or you have a full-time job from an employer is a Roth IRA. How a Roth IRA works is you, you earn your money like normal and you pay taxes on that income like normal and you make contributions from the income you've already paid taxes on into the Roth IRA and it can grow forever tax-free until your retirement. So for young people especially, this is a great account and the maximum you can invest into that account in 2014 or 2015 is $5,500 a year. So you can set up an automatic uh, payment from your checking account. If you have a business checking account, you can set it up as a recurring ACH or a recurring external transfer, or you can set it up as a bill pay, and the bill is paying yourself, and you want to make sure you put your account number on there. So if, if you open this at Vanguard or whatever brokerage you choose, you know, I, I use Schwab, um, I have Vanguard funds, you know, there's other ones like Fidelity or E-Trade or Scott Trade or Trade King. There's plenty of brokerages that offer these types of accounts. It's best to go with one that you already like and are comfortable with. And if you don't have one, you know, Vanguard's great because they have so many accounts or uh, accounts, investments to choose from at a pretty low fee and some of the lowest in the industry. I liked Schwab because I already had some other accounts there and they have great funds as well. So either way, um, it's a great choice to get started with your Roth IRA. Now, to get that $5,500 per year automatically, depending on how your income works, which different types of independent workers have different types of income, some get paid all at one time during the month, some get invoices throughout the month, so that, you know, it's up to you how you want to time your contribution, but to make sure you hit that $5,500 per year, you will want to put in $458 per month or $105 per week and change to hit that $5,500 per year. And that is the IRS who sets the maximum you can put into that type of account. And I have one of those myself, so does my wife. We max them out every year. And I'm recording this in March, and this will go live in March. So if you're listening to this anytime before tax day in the year you're listening to, because this will... Um, be good advice forever, you can make a contribution to a Roth IRA for the prior calendar year until you file your taxes or until April 15th if you, you can do an amended um, tax form and that, uh, that IRA contribution will be counted in there. Uh, that actually goes for a regular traditional IRA as well, which will lower your taxes. A Roth IRA won't lower your taxes, but it's better in the long run to do the Roth. So the second type of account, which you can also do contributions and set up until you file your taxes, is called an SEP IRA, or Simplified Employee Pension Plan. That's what SEP stands for. So an SEP works pretty much just like a 401k, except you are the employer, so it's not this giant plan offered to you know, hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of employees. You pretty much run it all yourself, but it works very similar to an IRA or a Roth IRA. It just uses the same type of rule structure as a 401k. So the rules are to open an SEP, you have to either be a sole proprietor or some type of business owner if you have an LLC, something like that. But even if you haven't filed the LLC or C Corp paperwork as a sole proprietor, you can definitely open this. You just have to demonstrate you own or you earn income on the side with a Schedule C on your taxes or whatnot. So if you file with a Schedule C, um, this is perfect for you. If you're in a partnership, you're eligible as well. Both partners can open up an SEP. Um, but you just have to earn some sort of self-employment income by providing some sort of service or product to be eligible. That's why it's um, that's who it's designed for. So when you open that account up, you can open it again at Vanguard or Schwab or that big list of account providers I offered earlier. You call them up or go on their website and search for SEP. That You can just type in those letters, SEP, or Simplified Employee Pension Plan, and that will get everything started. Now, the rules for that are a little different. Um, you can contribute up to 25% of your annual compensation with a maximum of $52,000 in 2014 or $53,000 for 2015. So if you're really, really good at what you do and make about $200,000 a year, you can, you'll cap out at the maximum you can put in 
or um, you know, let's say you make 100,000 a year, you can put 25,000 a year. And I would encourage you to put as much in there as you can afford. You don't want to be starving or risk losing, um, you losing your home, not being able to pay your rent or your mortgage, anything like that. But as much as you can afford to put in on top of that Roth IRA, the more the better because you know it's, it's you're paying yourself. You you will have that money. It feels like you don't have it now, but if you automate those payments into that account, which is a pretty simple automation process, and the bill pay or however you want to set that up with online transfers, um, you can usually set that up also within your brokerage account. So within the SEP, you can set up a time recurring transfer in from another account, um, which could be your business account if you'd like. So if you pay yourself on a regular schedule, you can just have that be a business expense to pay you into your retirement account. So you can still open that again for the prior year up until April 15th or when you file your taxes. And what's great about that SEP, because it works like a 401k, it lowers your taxes this year and you pay taxes then on your payments in the future when you make withdrawals. So when it pays you out when you're retired. So every if you make, let's say you're a single person in the 25% tax bracket, for every $400 you put into that account, your tax bill is going to go down by $100. No, I think that's pretty sweet. I imagine that you do too. So I highly encourage you to take advantage of all of this. Save as much money in your taxes as you can. You're putting money away for your future and all is good. So um, thank you again very much, Carrie, for asking your question and being a part of the show. If you or anyone you know out there in podcast land wants to ask me a question, just head to personalprofitability.com. Click on the little hamburger icon at the top and click on Ask Eric. You can leave me a voice question there. And the next two questions featured on the show will get a free copy of Chris Gillibo's book. Um, I have them sitting right here in front of me, The Happiness of Pursuit, and you will get your question answered as well. So please leave your questions and a huge favor for everybody listening out there. For me, this podcast is now in the iTunes store, so you can go on iTunes and subscribe. And it would be a huge favor to me if you would just go in there and leave a rating. You know, If you think it's worth a five-star rating, which I hope you do, please click that five-star, leave a, a comment, a sentence or two. It doesn't cost you anything other than a few seconds, but it means the world to me and helps this show grow to help a lot of other people who have their finance questions. So thank you, Kerry. Thanks, everyone, for listening and being a part of it. And we will talk to you next time. Thanks for listening to the Personal Profitability Podcast. And go out there and make some money. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Personal Profitability Podcast from Narrow Bridge Finance. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a rating on iTunes or share it with a friend.